Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today I want to do a continuation of the unusual plant series. Plants that are a bit weird looking, not ones that you see all the time. Some of these might be classed as rare, some of them might not. But these are not the ones that you would find all the time in plant stores or garden centers, at least not where I'm based, which is in the UK. So I would imagine this prob probably holds true for most of Europe. I might be a bit wrong with this one. Do let me know down below. I know a lot of you always will. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and today's video is going to be a bit more of a focus, not exclusively because I didn't have enough to just add orchids, but I want to do a bit more of an orchid fo focus today. Some of these orchids I do own. Not all of these have I got pictures of them in bloom, and I'll see if I can find different sources for the images, and I will obviously as always link them down below in the description. But yeah, I think without further ado, let's have a look at some of these plants. Some of them are much more on the heavier foliage side. Some of them, because they're orchids, are a bit more interesting on the bloom side of things. But yeah, let's let's dive into the first orchid. So the first orchid, interestingly enough, the foliage isn't that exciting. The bloom can be. I have never got mine to bloom yet, and I think I have got it four or five years now. <laughs> and this is an orchid that not a lot of people know it's an orchid, if that makes sense, and this will make sense. Vanilla. Vanilla pods come from vanilla orchids. So that is something to bear in mind there. And, and I'll obviously put the scientific name at the very top there. But yeah, the vanilla orchid is very cool. It's a bit of a vining orchid, which also makes it a bit more unusual in relation to other orchids. And I'll add photos of videos throughout this video and you'll be able to see what it looks like. And this can get absolutely huge. It can kind of vine up against trees. It almost looks a bit like a golden pothos. So yeah, it's a very, very cool orchid to have. And a lot of people will try to get it to bloom. A lot of people have managed to get it to bloom. I haven't done it with mine. I probably don't have it in the best conditions. I think if I had it in the best conditions, it would be in here rather than in regular household humidity where I've usually got it most of the time, living with my other moth orchids, uh, Phalaenopsis orchids. And it's usually above a radiator. It's still in its sphagnum moss when I bought it. In that many years ago, I keep wrapping it around the same few sticks. It's not doing what it needs to do. Had I have let it grow, potentially in a much more high humidity environment like this is, up against walls or trellises and all these things, and if I had it growing everywhere, I probably would get that. Now, the reality from what I've seen from a lot of people is not only can be a bit of a challenge to get them to grow indoors, but I think the blooming window is quite short. The pollination that you need to then do in order for it to develop the seed pods can be quite long as well. Them developing from a bloom into a seed pod, then you taking those seed pods at the right time and drying them out in order to get the vanilla pods for how much vanilla you will get. It's probably gonna be more of a labor of love, but it's a very, very cool plant that occasionally, and I actually found it at a local garden center. It's kind of a cool one to have because how many people can say I've, I'm growing vanilla in my house? It's an orchid. It's very, very, very cool. So it might, and in my humble opinion, is it an exciting plant? Not really. I did have a great uh, follower and if you do see this, say hi down below, uh, who managed to get a version of, so it was still a vanilla orchid, but it was a different type of vanilla orchid to the one that I have, and I think the one that most people will, will have, and it was much, much larger. That one's a bit more interesting. That one, I would say, oh yeah, that one's really, really cool to have as a decorative plant and all these things. I think it was more of the, the kind of novelty factor for me, but it's still a very cool plant to have regardless, and I don't think 
there is enough of these plants that we could be taking care of in our household environments. And I know I've mentioned in a previous video my mastic gum plant, so the mastic tree that I bought. That's another one. I had uh, an amazing uh, planting friend online who I think has roots from the Middle East. So they have um, kind of fond memories of frankincense and they managed to find frankincense. So they're growing frankincense, which is really, really cool. I think another one could be that you could grow ginger, not the decorative ginger that we get a lot of the time in kind of houseplant trade or the business of houseplants and you can find them in shops. So for instance, I've got the spiral variegated ginger. Traditional kind of eating ginger is one that does, will look quite cool as a kind of foliage plant, but it's also a root vegetable that you can eat. So yeah, and I think some people also grow sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes can vine and they look really, really cool, but obviously it's a little sweet potato. You can have it as a sweet potato. I think that one, it can be a bit problematic with pests indoors. And I think Summer Rain Oaks was growing it in her conditions. And I think she was saying the, the pest pressures maybe didn't outweigh. I, I might be misquoting this, but yeah, I think she was having some issues with pests there. So it's whether or not you want to do that in your household environment. But cool to have some house plants that are also kind of edible, really. But yeah, let's move on to the next plant. So the next plant is what, and I'm going to butcher some of these names, is called the Dracula Solii. I think that's how you pronounce it. And let me pick it up. It's right behind me. It's not blooming. It still hasn't bloomed. I think I've had it for nearly two years. And I know that this needs very specific conditions to bloom, basically. But let me pick it up here. And you might think it just looks a bit like grass. This is getting bushier this year. I am very hopeful this year that I might get some blooms on this. This, and I'll see if I can add a picture, if I can find a picture to add on here what the blooms look like. These are the orchids that look a bit like monkey faces, which I thought was really, really cool. Now, the interesting thing, I did my research when I was getting this orchid, and you might be able to see this is a very, very open kind of net pot, and it's still in uh, sphagnum moss, this one is an interesting one, and from what I was reading from everybody else, it is highly recommended that you give it as, as kind of open of a net pot as you possibly can, because a lot of the times what you might see is coming out as roots, and I'll see if I can bring it in, and you might be able to see that little tiny root there. I'll take my face away from it. That is a root, but the stems of the flowers come out of the bottom sometimes as well. Sometimes they'll come up the top and sometimes they'll come out at the bottom. I don't know if it's every time that they'll come out the bottom, but you need to be able to give it space to do that basically. So really, really highly imperative that you do that. Very cool plant. I've still not had it flower for me. I don't think this um, specific orchid is the only one that looks like a monkey face. I think there are other ones as well. I think they might all be called Dracula-esque uh, orchids. But these are interesting because in order for them to be at their happiest, and this is why I might never get it to bloom in here, is this needs for the temperature to drop, if I'm not mistaken, down to fifth. It would like it. It's a kind of more cold growing orchid, which for me would suggest that it's used to growing at higher altitudes. This needs a kind of standard temperature around 15 degrees, which is interesting. And I think this has done exceptionally well this winter because we had the cold snap and we did have points in this conservatory where it was at 15 degrees on a regular basis. <laughs> but the rest of my plants didn't like it. This one did. It's an interesting one because I've seen some people in the UK growing this in greenhouses. But again, you can't control that. After a while, it gets too cold for it to be 15 degrees. I don't know if you've ever got one of these and you were able to get this to bloom. Do let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know. The next one, and I'll put a picture here of from my plant care app purely because I did think, I think I had snapped a picture when it was blooming. It's not currently blooming. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the Maxillaria tenufolia. I might be wrong and I'll correct myself up there. But the coconut orchid. And this is a really, really cool one. If you ever come across it, I did actually come across this in a plant store, the, the plant den that when it was still open, there was unfortunately no longer with us trading as the plant den. I think 
Um, there is another business now that's taking over the name called uh, Happy Plant Company, which is really, really cool. I've spoken to those guys as well. But it is a plant that, or an orchid that does grow a bit like a grass. And you might be able to see from the picture here as well. And it's got little bulblets or pseudobulbs, essentially, that grow within that grass. They almost do look a bit like they could be green coconuts. The blooms are quite small. They're kind of orange, I think, and cream speckled. However, the scent and everybody knows of the Phalaenopsis orchids, but if you have not experienced orchids that have scents to them, you are missing out drastically. That orchid I had in my conservatory is upstairs now growing with the rest of my orchids because I want to see it in different conditions. I used to walk in here when it was in here and it was in bloom and it, the whole space smelled like coconut pie. It was intense. It was a beautiful, beautiful smell. Not sickly, I don't think. It's quite sweet smell, but it does smell I don't know how else to describe it, like coconut pie. And I think sometimes they sell it as orchid coconut pie. Oh, you get a biscuit scent, you get a coconutty scent. It is spectacular. Is it the easiest thing to keep happy? Is it the easiest thing to rebloom? But I know for the people that are really into their orchids, they're probably saying, yes, it probably is quite easy to get it to bloom or it is quite easy to keep it happy. I'm still learning when it comes to orchids, so please all be very kind down below in the comments, especially if you're an orchid person. <laughs> if you want to give some advice, please do though, however. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very cool one that not a lot of people talk about, and I think they should. It's a very, very, very cool orchid. Um, slightly different one as well. I think that one's also one that tends to like moisture a bit more. So that's always been grown. In, I've seen it at least always been grown in Dams Sphagnum Moss. I left some of mine in Dams Sphagnum Moss. Some of them I've also moved into Pond, and they are doing okay. So let's see what happens with all of these when summer rolls around and the temperatures kind of start changing again, whether or not I'm going to get some blooms in regular household humidity. I am still hopeful, but remains to be seen. But yeah, uh, amazing, amazing plants. Definitely one to maybe consider. Now, a different type of orchid, and this is the Bilatus type of orchid, and I think I've got a very specific Bilatus, so I'll put the name at the top there. And... I'll add a photo or a clip here of what the plant looks like. Again, it's got those pseudobulbs, but it, from each pseudobulb, there is one kind of like thick leaf that is growing, and each other pseudobulb, at least how I'm finding it, is growing, will get one leaf on it. It does like to be kept a bit more moist from what I'm reading, but the blooms are amazing. And for some reason, the blooms always remind me of the, <laughs> the movie Cocoon, <laughs> for those who are of a certain age and know what that's like. <laughs> but the blooms kind of hang down, and I don't know how to describe them, and I'll see if I can add a picture here. They kind of look like alien cocoons. It's bizarre. So they've got like almost a bit like a face looking at thing at the top, and it's... Uh... It looks like long kind of sleeping bags. I'm not describing this well. Hopefully the picture will make sense, but they kind of almost look a bit alien-like. I think other people say that it does look a bit like fingers. It's an odd one, but because it's an odd one is why I like it. I have not got mine to bloom yet. I've had it for a couple of years. Again, I, and I think I know from what I was reading online, these are not particularly or easy orchids to get to bloom potentially, but... I don't know, I, I find these orchids and I find them quite interesting and I want to kind of get them. I've, I've not got there just yet. Uh, another honourable mention that I will give here, and this is one that uh, Matthew from uh, Plant Daddy podcast loves, and I think Stephen, have both, both Matthew and Stephen have got these, and I cannot remember the name of them here, I'll put them at the top there. I think their common name is Lady of the Night, and apparently when they do bloom, it's another scented orchid, the smell of like lemon and mixed with jasmine is intense and it smells overnight. I've got a very specific one. I think it's a bit more easy to find in the States than it is over here. The only one that I could find when I got mine was one called, I can't remember, I'll, I'll put the variant of whichever one I got up there. I have still not been able to get it to bloom and it's been three or four years. And I've tried it in different media. I've tried it in damp sphagnum moss. I've tried it in regular coat. Um, 
Orchid Bark, I'm now trying it in Pond. The Pond seems to be doing the best so far, so it remains to be seen. But I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I've still not been able to get it to bloom. It is a beautiful orchid in terms of that it looks a bit kind of grass-like. But yeah, so that's another one. Just a bit of an honorable mention for that one. But yeah, let's move on to the next plant. This one isn't an orchid, but the word orchid appears in its kind of more common name. And I've got one, it's directly on top of me. I don't know whether or not you've ever noticed this, if I've ever panned up, but I'll see if I can take some clips or some photos and add it here. Mine's looking a bit mustard and a bit crusty and musty at the moment, but it is the fern leaf orchid cactus. It is a tropical cactus, it's not an orchid. And it does, the reason why I got it is because the foliage looks really cool and it's mainly going to be the foliage. The foliage is going to be the thing that you're going to see on a regular basis. And to me, it just reminds me a bit of, I think, kelp or some form of seaweed actually. And I've got it in an upside down pot and it's growing down and out. It, there was a point where it was covered in mealybugs. I'm also seeing now there might be a point where there's a few spider mites that I need to deal with it. That plant has had a lot go on with it, which is why I found it really shocking. And I will add a picture here. It bloomed for the first time since I've owned it. And I think I've owned this for about four years now as well, but it bloomed and it was beautiful. And, um, yeah, it's a, I think it's an epiphyllum. I think it's an epiphyllum. Might be wrong. I'll put my, put it up at the top there. But the bloom only opens overnight. And I knew that it was coming. And it's apparently one that you tend to get in the summer months. But mine decided to bloom during the coldest part of the year. Granted, it was, it sits directly above the one radiator that I've got running all the time in this space. So probably that temperature is quite constant around that plant. But yeah, it was spectacular. The scent, and I'll see, I could put a picture of the bloom because I took several pictures as it was opening up. But the scent was interesting. It was kind of a lemony, kind of jasmine-y smell with an undertone of cabbage. <laughs> it was okay. It was... <laughs> It was odd, but it was very cool. And I know a lot of people reached out when I shared this on Instagram because I know that this isn't a plant that a lot of people are generally able to easily get to bloom indoors. And as I say, I was not trying to do it. I was just bought it. I knew the plant was kind of bloom shy indoors. Uh, so I just like this foliage and I still do. And I think it's a really cool plant, but not a lot of people know about it. And I think they should. And coming on to one of the last orchids on the list, and this is a terrestrial or a jewel orchid. And there's a few terrestrial and jewel orchids that kind of grow very differently to the orchids that we might kind of consider. These ones, as the name might suggest, are terrestrial. So they're growing in the ground rather than in kind of nooks and crannies of plants and kind of more up in the canopy, essentially. So one I think is called Ludicia Discolor, I think. And the one that I want to talk about is the Macodes Petola. Completely butchering these names. I will put them up at the top there. But the Ludicia one, I have tried growing three times now, barring the fact that I don't particularly like what it looks like. And I'll see if I can find pictures and add them here. For me, it's just a muddy kind of brownie burgundy, I think. This, there's definitely an audience for this plant somewhere. I think I was never that enamored with this plant. The fact that I have managed to kill it every time I've bought it really does not make it appeal to me too much. So I'll leave that for other people to kind of comment on. But the Makodi, Makodis Petola is really cool. I've only ever grown that in my bio orb terrarium. So I will add some clips in here so you can see it. Please be aware that I'm taking clips in a terrarium so the video might not be the best. But those ones are really, really cool because they've got veination on their leaves that kind of almost looks like a rainbow lightning and it will make more sense when you're looking at the video. Very, very cool plant. 
but most of these terrestrial orchids, I have kind of let them bloom at different stages. They have a very long flower spike and the tiny, tiny, tiniest little blooms that come on it, really insignificant. They don't have a scent or anything that's really particularly important about them. So a lot of people generally might just chop them off and just so that the plant can utilize its energy more for the foliage. And it's interesting because a lot of the times with the orchids, you are growing them for the blooms, not for the actual foliage. But for this one, you are definitely growing it for the foliage. One final honorable mention is a Paphipedalum, I think, a Paphiopedalum. can never pronounce it properly either. I'll put it up the top there, which I have got in my care and it's currently in bloom and I will add a picture there. The, the, the bloom is interesting. It's got white and kind of greens and yellows on it and that's fine. The foliage, which is most people forget that a lot of the times with orchids, you're kind of looking at the foliage for 99% of the time that you're going to own it and not the actual bloom. So make sure that if you can and you can get interesting foliage, get interesting foliage. This one's got interesting foliage because other, unlike other paphipedalums, this almost has like a checkerboard variegation that happens on the leaves, which is really, really cool. And again, I'll add the picture here so you might be able to see. So that's a really interesting orchid to maybe potentially consider buying. And I think I found that on occasion in different plant stores. It does crop up on occasion, at least here in the UK. Now coming into a couple of plants that uh, one of the one of my Instagram kind of followers kind of reached out and said, ooh, what about you mentioning these? And I'm just like, I don't own these. I, would, I wanted to own these at some point or other. I still have not have come across them, but yeah, so I thought I would kind of highlight some of their interesting plants. And again, I will actually open this up to you in the comments. If you've got some really interesting and unusual looking plants, let me know down in the comments down below. And I could always add them in to future videos. Even better if you've got an Instagram and you are following me. If you're not following me, please consider following me. I've got the link down in the description below. But if you've got it and you can send me pictures, it makes my life a bit easier to include that plant in the actual next one of these videos because hopefully you'll be able to allow me to use your image to kind of just showcase what the cool plants might look like and just bring a bit more awareness to people. So these two next plants I don't have personal experience of growing, but um, they are very interesting and possibly ones that need to get a bit of attention. So the first one is an Alocasia flying squid, I think it is, which is super cool because I, for me, I kind of get the, 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 the squid notion, the, 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 the leaves are tiny and it's more petiole than, than leaf basically essentially, but it does almost look a bit, the way that I, I'm kind of imagining these plants look like, it's as if, a giant squid has jumped out of the sea and has dived back in and what you're seeing is all the tentacles as it's kind of jumped back into the water. I, that makes sense in my head. Very kind of crackney vibes with this. It is an alocasia, so this might be tricky for some people to grow, might not be, but a uh, very, very cool plant nonetheless. And I was aware of this plant. I just have not come across one yet in order to purchase it. I don't think it's a particularly difficult one to find either. So yeah, the Alocasia flying squid. And the next one is a Geocananthus. <laughs> These names are always fun. And let me, I've got the list down below. So it's a Geocananthus popegi. Um, popegii, I don't know, I'll put it at the top there. This is another one of the plants that kind of, I think some people kind of shortened down to geos. And we talked about this with Jane Perone on the Ledge podcast in an episode that we did together about the geocananthus as kind of having a bit of a comeback because they had their day back in the 70s and 80s and people are rediscovering them now. This is not the traditional one, this one that I'm talking about. And I'll add a picture from that amazing Instagram follower. This isn't the, the one with the dark leaf and the purple line in the middle. This is one that's got a bit more pattern and texture on the leaves. Kind of cool. I was having a conversation with this individual and they were saying that, oh, uh, I'm just like, is it difficult? And it's just like, probably not so, not as difficult as, no more difficult than maybe a Calathea, I think it was, or something along those lines. So doable, definitely doable.
And I'll finish off with a plant that I'm pretty sure I haven't included in other videos. If I have, you might never see this section. <laughs> it is a Senecio angel wings. And I used to grow this in the house, and this is one that I, I found out about this from Michael Perry, pretty sure that's the name, Mr. Plant Geek on Instagram. And this is a cool plant that I think won a Chelsea Award a few years back as well. It's a Senecio. Um, and I will add photos or videos here. And because I did want to include this in my previous video, which was kind of, I think it was filmed in the summer. So this might look um, kind of out of season in terms of vid videos or pictures. But this can also grow in the garden. And I have grown it in the garden for a few years now in the soil and it will pop up. I bought one and you might be able to see from the videos that it has popped into six or seven different plants at the moment got very large paddly leaves. They are fully covered in white fuzz, which oh, if you're into textures and kind of like soft leaves, it's one of those things that you're going to always want to kind of stroke a bit because it feels that that really soft kind of feeling that you get from like bunny ears or things like that. It is absolutely amazing and really interesting because it grew like a weed in the house in this pot and it got so big but then I found out and I actually didn't there is a point where this became a bit more available in some garden centers and plant stores but interestingly when I first found it it was being sold in a garden center in the outdoor plant section and I think the same garden center still has it in the outdoor plant collection occasionally on the indoor one as well but really really cool plant I'm curious because I'm kind of looking at it at the moment it is holding on for dear life but we did have a very very hard wintry bit with some hard frost for days and some of the lower leaves might have struggled but I think it's going to be okay it might look a bit busted for a bit I might have to trim it all the way back down to stumps and let it grow again from like the base just to keep it a bit more in shape, it can sprawl quite unattractively if you if you don't really kind of tend to maintain it a bit more in the garden because obviously it's got a bit more freedom to do so. But a very, very cool plant to round off this video with. If you've got, as I said, some of your own suggestions, please do drop them down below. Let me know if you've heard of some of these down below. Please be kind if you are an orchid person. I am still learning. Um, but yeah. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.